Thank God. Hello. 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 Well, hello. Hello, Holy One. Welcome. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. From the viewpoint of us disciples, Jesus was not only one of the prophets sent by the merciful God to the Hebrews. We repeatedly witnessed the healing of sick people and the raising of the dead by the Son of Mary. So we considered him a manifestation of the attribute with which he always described God, the living God. O oh, brethren, believe me, verily I have come to this world with a merit given to no human thus far. For our God created not man to leave him in the world, but to place him in paradise. Philip. Jacob. Matthew. Peter. I shall dispatch you today. Go far and wide across Judea and tell the people what you have heard from me. Heal the ailed in the name of God. Cast out the devils. And by telling people what I have told you, you will annul the misconception people have about me. Now go. Are you upset about something? No, but something is not right. I don't understand. I mean, I don't know what it is. Matthew the publican is unable? Huh? I'm serious, Peter. Do you really think that we can go around the country healing the sick? You doubt it? Well... We've never done such things before. When I went to the synagogue to listen to the preaching of the Pharisees, whenever the issue of miracles was discussed, I realized that only great prophets like Moses, Joshua, and Elijah could do it. The pious people who've spent a lifetime on God's path. Then there is I, with such a past? No. You must have faith. You can do it. We all can. And why? Because the Master said we can. Master said, God places mercy and compassion in the heart of whoever believes in Him. And whoever has mercy and compassion in his heart can do extraordinary things. I'm sure, just as God has so far maintained our teacher's reputation, he will surely maintain his student's reputation as well. Don't forget his advice. But it's not that easy, Peter. Tell me why God has willed that ordinary people like us should heal the sick. That's what I was going to say. From the viewpoint of us disciples, Jesus was not only one of the prophets sent by the merciful God to the Hebrews. We repeatedly witnessed the healing of sick people and the raising of the dead by the Son of Mary. So we considered him 
a manifestation of the attribute with which he always described God, the living God. O oh, brethren, believe me, verily I have come to this world with a merit given to no human thus far. For our God created not man to leave him in the world, but to place him in paradise. coming. I think it is Jesus and his apostles. Oh, people, bring your sick. Jesus of Nazareth is coming. What are you saying? Jesus is not there. You're only his disciple. We have come here alone because the master told us to do so. So you do not blaspheme unknowingly. Jesus, has never claimed to be the Son of God. It was the infidel Romans who started that rumor amongst the people when they saw Jesus raise up a young man in name. And then numerous devils spread the rumor amongst you. Why? Fame Jesus and give him to their headsmen? They are nothing but rumors spread by the Romans, much the same as what they did to his martyred cousin John. And now, the Son of Mary sent us to heal your sick by God's mercy and to put out the fire of this sedition forever. Why are you just standing there? Did you not hear what the closest apostle of Jesus said? Bring your ailing people, quickly! Hurry! Jesus' promise is God's promise. And God's promise is truthful. And God shall never humiliate his chosen servant in front of the people. Have mercy on me! Help me! Can you hear me? Here you are. Heal this poor man. Poor man? He is a leper, Peter. They usually wander around the city. As thou granted thy blessing unto the Virgin Mary and unto her son Jesus, that he healed. The leper, the blind and the deaf, by thy glorious will, I pray to thee to have mercy. Upon this humble servant, I pray that you heal this man. It's 
raining. It's raining. Look, it's raining. It's raining. Yes, it's raining. What happened? It's raining. It's raining. It's raining. It's a miracle. It's raining. It's a miracle. It's raining. It's a miracle. Oh, you can see! It's you can see! It's a miracle! Hello, Master. Hello. In the end, all over Judea, the truthfulness of the teachings of Jesus were proven. That there is one God, and that Jesus is his prophet. People witnessed that the apostles healed the sick in the same way that Jesus had done. After healing many, the disciples returned to Jesus, who received them as a father would receive his sons. Surely I have seen Satan fall beneath your feet, and you trample upon him as you cast out Demons which have tormented many men. O oh, Master, innumerous sick people we have healed and we have cast out. Hundreds of demons which have been tormenting men. Peter is right. We have been to many places. We healed many sick people with our own hands. Tell us again, Master. What was the reason for it? Why God healed the sick through our hands? So the claim that I am the Son of God is forever eradicated. Will that really happen? No. After I am gone, Satan will begin the chaos anew. To the extent that only a few will remain faithful. Then who will reveal the truth? God will, by the coming of the last prophet, only he shall reveal the truth about me. The last prophet? The last prophet? Blessed be the name of God, who did not belittle the prayer of his servant. and granted his request. Master, we better return to Bethany before nightfall. What are you waiting for, Judas? Wandering alone at night welcomes the attack of wolves. Never mind him. He's distracted. <laughs> May God bless him. What are you looking for here? I should ask you the same thing. We've been friends for a long time, after all. You could do the people a favor. For God's religion, 
and for Moses precept for the priesthood council which is the heir to the holy council of Moses and Aaron's time it's true he is extraordinary he does miracles and sure it's astounding but mark my words he is not the one for whom we are waiting he is someone like John, an Eastern, moderate John. Judas, Judas, don't be like that. Listen to me. I know you. And you aren't made for roaming about the deserts of this forsaken place. You are not meant for that. You're educated. You've read many books. Your father was a great merchant. You were a successful merchant. You do not suit vagrancy. You looked at yourself. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. Jesus doesn't understand what he's done. He's turned everyone against each other. People believe in nothing anymore. They used to be faithful. They used to go to the temples give offerings, make vows. They fasted to please God. And the holy temple was prosperous. You go and see the temple. You go and see it. People do not even fill one courtyard. They deny everything. People are denying everything. Everything. Can you understand that? They are looking for a prophet to be their king. Not someone like your teacher whose only weapon is preaching and miracles. If the sedition in Judea is because of Jesus, you can be sure that the first ones to turn their backs will be these disobedient ones. They did the very same to John when he was arrested. You cannot let it go that far. You can put an end to this sedition. Well, what do you say? Where are you going? I'm talking to you! You will be tamed. I'll tame you, you can be sure of that. Judas, you will see. Peace. Peace. Thank God. Peace. Peace, O oh Holy One. Peace, O oh Holy One. Peace unto you. Peace. Peace. The miracle of Jesus. is a hole of darkness. The spite of the Sanhedrin has been increased tenfold by your revival. Lazarus, I'm very worried for you. Have you heard something? They spread the rumor that you colluded with Jesus. 
that your return to life was not a miracle. They're completely denying there was a miracle. How dark is this nation's thinking? Since the time of David and Prophet Solomon, this nation has been cursed. They will do something so terrible that even Jesus will curse them. You know me? Yes, I know who you are. Hmm. Everyone's talking about you. The mighty miracle of Jesus. You are well known already. A family man. Generous. A landowner. With a demonized sister who became a saint overnight. Lazarus, I don't believe in Jesus. He has made Judea filthy. Son against father. Brother against brother. Which prophet of God has ever set family members against each other? Prophets unite, not disunite. When the prophet appears, everyone will be tested. As you are his foe, Many others love him and follow him. Everything will become clear when the prophet appears. The so-called spirit of God will cause chaos all over the world. Jesus has overstepped his limits. The priests cannot tolerate the situation anymore. That's why I've come to show him his limits so he doesn't pretend to be loftier than Moses. We'll meet again. Wait, so... I need to talk to you. You continue your conspiracy. God, too, shall bring forth conspiracy. Is God a conspirator? Well? He is. In response to his foes, yes. Don't argue with him, Mary. He's not one of us. Mary Magdalene. He is just a sorcerer. Jesus' sorcery didn't guide you, but the stones of Jerusalem may heal you after your master has died. As for you, Tarsus Scholar. What? You will meet a bitter end. Would you like to hear how? I wouldn't mind hearing my fortune from a demonized and then healed sorceress. Beside Cain and Pharaoh, you will burn Saul. Mary, how do you know him? Before I was healed, I had seen Satan. And he was Satan. Mary, how you've changed. I envy your serenity.
Excellency Lazarus, uh, where are you going at this late hour? Just for a walk. I have a strange feeling. I don't think you should go. Some people are out there waiting for a chance to cause trouble in the city. They're not happy with the miracle of your revival. I know. They are unhappy that I am alive. I think they'd prefer that I was in the graveyard. Graveyard? Don't worry. I'll be fine no matter where I am. Because I'm always close to death. Goodbye. Didn't he once say that he would never go anywhere with a crowd? It's no use. People like him. Tact is what we must use. Tact! We 
We tried tact. We tried everything. We should have killed him. No, no. It's too soon still. We must remain hopeful. He knows the Torah better than any of us. He knows what is and what is not written in it. He even once said, the verse you're reading has been written by your own scribes. It does not exist in the Torah. He claims that there are things included in the Torah which are not the truth. Is there no one who is a match for him? I wonder. Perhaps it is Satan himself who is teaching him. Welcome. Welcome, welcome to the, to holy, the holy city. city. Jesus. Welcome to the welcome holy Jesus. city. Welcome, welcome to the holy, holy city. city. Jesus. Welcome Jesus. Cannot you hear them? Why don't you tell them to be quiet? Why don't you tell them anything? Tell them all to be quiet. Tell them to shut up. Tell them to be quiet. As God lives, if men should hold their peace, the stones in Jerusalem would cry out. Blessed be Jesus who comes to Jerusalem. Hosanna, Jesus, Jesus the Savior. Quiet! This priest is a sorcerer. He's used magic to cast a spell on you. Jerusalem, tumultuous and sedition-infested city. Listen to what God is telling you. I sent unto you my servant out of mercy to return you to your hearts. So you might repent. But you, the sedition-infested city, Instead, you forgot. But I had bestowed upon the rebellious Egyptians and the despot Pharaoh. Out of my mercy unto Jacob and his tribes. You should have cried many times so that my servant healed the ailment in your body. Instead, you want to kill my servant who seeks to save you from your sins. Do you think I shall leave you unpunished? I shall attack you through a huge army and shall give you to your foes in a way that your haughtiness and rebellion shall wind up in hell. Do you think you will live forever? Or your greatness will save you from me? By God who is living, the people of ailing souls in this city outnumber the sorrows of the people living here. So in order that you may know the truth, 
in the name of Almighty God and by God's will, I now tell you that all the diseases shall leave your bodies. Listen. Almighty God says, when Jerusalem cries for its sins and fights its corporeal lusts on my path, then I shall forget its sins and shall not afflict it with the calamities I mentioned. But alas, Jerusalem is crying for its death, not for insulting me. O oh, people, I swear to myself, I who am eternal, if my servants Job, Abraham, Samuel, Daniel, Moses, and David Pray for this rebellious city, it shall not lessen my wrath unto this city. Where is the master? He is eating with the disciples in the grove. Are you not hungry? It is a strange time. How come? I never imagined that I myself would fall into this trap. Trap? I never imagined coming across a bandit called love on the way to learning divine knowledge. Are they contradictory? From sky to sky, I suppose they could be. Judas, why are you waiting for me? I'll not marry you as long as the Master is alive. You must accept that. But I can't. Jesus is ensnared. He's trapped by pressures, pressures I fear may break him soon. So why are we talking about this? I've waited this long, and I'll keep waiting. I shall never leave the Master. Judas... I'll wait for you, as long as God wills it. I'll wait. What will you do? Will you stay or return to the city? I have to go back. I've left Martha alone in Jerusalem. She's already very concerned. Wait until I tell our brothers. Then I'll accompany you. No. I'll return by myself. It's better. But I have something to do in Jerusalem. Judas. I need you to promise me something. Of course. Whatever you like. Judas... I want only that you tell me if there's any threat to our teacher. I want to be beside him. What are you saying? Promise me, please, Judas. Promise. I promise. 